ahead and begin. This is going to be a recorded session anyway, so if we've got folks that join us afterwards, they can. Um, we can certainly send them the recording. Again, my name is Leah Malfani. I am the Sponsorship and Strategic Director here for Sonoma County Vintners. I primarily work with our partners in our anchor events, the Barrel Auction, Taste of Sonoma, the Wine Auction, but um, I also work on the Visa Signature Program and some um, strategic partnerships such as this one with Govino. Um, a couple of weeks ago, Sonoma County Vintners launched what um, a new branded academic program, which we're calling Scion, the Sonoma County Industry Opportunity Network. It's going to be where we put um, all of our educational seminars and webinars um, and also evolve into creating a library of resources for members that'll include recordings for things like this, presentations, um, past events, any relevant industry topics, um, and then and really connecting all of our wineries to um, resources, partners, um, affiliates, and sponsors throughout the year. So, um, so thank you for joining us. This is part of a planning 2021 series. Um, and last week um, was about labor law. Obviously, this one is about tastings. We've got two more coming up. Um, next week on November 12th is going to be um, contracts compliance and permitting with um, CMPR, which is a law firm. And then November 18th is about um, financial planning for 2021 um, with American Ag Credit and really taking a look at what um, 2020 brought, um, how we can unpack that a little bit and um, use those learnings as you move into 2021. Planning 2021 is, seems like kind of an overwhelming thing. Um, I, don't, I wouldn't know where to start if I were you as on the winery side of things, but hopefully this series um, will help guide you a little bit. Um, a couple of housekeeping notes for you all. Um, this is in a webinar format, so we can't see you obviously, but I will be looking at the chat, the, queue, the questions and answers, and then you can also raise your hand um, too at any point and I'm happy to um, I can allow you to speak if you wanted to ask a question directly. Um, we've got an amazing panel here today. There we're gonna we, we're gonna call it Sonoma County style, which is just a really robust conversation. And you know if you've got questions that come up, please chime in um, and we're happy to hear from you. But um, it'll be casual. Um, it's really meant to sort of inspire ideas and concepts for how you start to approach what a tasting experience looks like for 2021 um, and, and moving forward. So um, again, welcoming all comments there. I am going to do a quick introduction and then um, to everybody else and then we'll just sort of dive into things. No questions right now. Okay. Um, so to start, um, our sponsor for this program and really leading the discussion and sort of the central person for all of these connections is um, Joseph Pirelli, um, who is a president and co-founder of Govino. I can't say enough about how wonderful he's been to work with, how innovative he's been um, just to think through what wineries might need, how we can talk about this, where he can help. Um, and so I'm, I'm pleased to have him um, sort of lead this conversation. And then he's also bringing on um, Andy Abramsam, who is the CEO of Communicano. Um, he leads an exceptional team in all things sort of branding and marketing, and he'll be going through um, an incredible program that um, I think will be really timely now um, as we reinvent tasting experiences. Um, and then two additional panelists, Sam Lando, um, you probably all know who Sam is. Um, so he's gonna be joining to talk a little bit about uh, a little mini case study. If you haven't heard about his social distance wine tour, um, it's incredible. And I think um, we'll learn a lot from there. Um, and then Rebecca Thompson, who is the regional market manager for Maison and Domain on Rio. Um, and she's gonna talk about how they've approached um, reinventing tasting rooms. So before I get into that, um, and then I promise I won't talk very much longer because you don't really wanna hear from me, but again, our focus today is about finding inspiration, solutions for new tasting experience. 
Um, and I do want to touch briefly on sort of the general landscape of what tasting experience is are in these unprecedented times. Um, obviously, with tasting room, you know, indoor tasting room closures, um, that makes has been a little has been difficult. Um, Sonoma County Vintners has sent out through it, ever since shelter in place, we have sent out some really good resources for folks. Um, so. If you are missing any of those, send me an email and I'll and I'll make sure you get those that information forwarded. But like in early April, we sent out virtual tasting resources. Like how do you stand out from all the other virtual tastings? Um, and there are some really good learnings out there. I know everyone's doing them, um, but there there are some good resources out there to to use for that. Um, obviously reopening and mitigation guidelines um, for your tasting rooms, both outdoor and when we can start to do indoor. Um, and then there's also some community mitigation best practices um, that that we put out there as well to help you um, sort of communicate to the rest of your team and um, so that we can start to peel off from that um, purple zone. So, and really help with the tasting room reopenings. Um, from the government relations side, ex extensive safety precautions. I think our wineries have done an incredible job with addressing those above and beyond, you know, what has been asked for. Um, and I know our government committee has been working really diligently to speak to officials about reopening indoor tastings um, and requesting modifications of the current tier system to allow that indoor tasting white um, indoor uh, tasting rooms opening. Um, with all that said, I think we have some reasonable expect expectations of what 2021 is going to look like. I think, you know, wintertime is really tough, but as we look into the new year, people are still going to want to be tasting outside probably as much as possible. Um, we're going to continue to be socially distancing and, and continuing those all of those safety measures. And I think everyone is still going to find ways or look for ways to sort of break through what now is you know the virtual tasting format so um so so that's sort of the landscape from this um perspective and again most of our conversation will just be about um learning about new things any questions on anywhere from there okay good um so i guess i'm gonna go ahead and introduce sam lando um i'm not gonna say much you guys again all know him um, and I've got some photos of uh, some of the stuff that he's been doing, but Sam, you did this um, Sonoma social distance wine tour. I guess start with where, how that whole thing came about and what you were looking to do with that experience. Sam, you're muted. Unmute. There you go. Oh, not yet good there yeah all right well thank you guys very much for having us and thank you for the intro leah uh, and joseph thank you for everything you guys are doing uh to help our industry we'll, we'll talk more about that as we get into, into it uh but but gang for everyone for all of you that are there might not know uh, who we are and what we do i mean we we essentially don't have a tasting room we're not open to the public uh when when covid clamped down earlier this year the main way that we acquire our customers, uh, and, and we, we only sell our wines twice a year, three weeks in the spring, three weeks in the fall. So it's pivotal that we keep bringing on new direct consumer customers throughout the year. We don't have super high attrition, but we have enough to where if you take your foot off the gas pedal for a year or a year and a half, things start to get really ugly. I mean, it compounds and, and gets really, really bad. And I've seen that over the years with other brands. So as, as we got into full lockdown mode, I looked at my wife and I said, this is gonna blow your mind and I've never talked about this before, but we're gonna buy a travel trailer. We're gonna put 20 cases of Pinot in it and we're gonna use our direct consumer relationships as well as our on-premise relationships and find a way to bring our tasting experience, Sonoma County experience to parts in the Northwest that we've never been before. And we started formulating this plan at the end of March bought the travel trailer, the kids were doing and still are doing distance learning. I mean, that's, I'm doing a social distancing event for two nights in a row down here in La Jolla, uh, the La Jolla Beach and Tennis Club. And, and the kids are 20 feet away from me on their laptops doing school right now. So we've, we've been in that mode. We know what it looks like. 
So I told my wife and kids, I said, hey, we're going to have hotspots. You guys are going to be doing Zoom calls and sessions. And we are going to go over the Northwest. We're going to do Oregon, uh, Montana, Wyoming, Idaho. And, and we're going to visit these places and share the story and experience. Uh, one of the things we also do, we're, we're pretty decent cooks. So in, in thinking about how to bring an experience to people, it was finding good partners. I mean, you as another wine brand, you need to have great associations. You need to have like-minded associations that really reinforce who you are and what you do. I feel I'm a little biased. I think that we make some of the best Pinot in our area. We're, we're getting noticed, but I mean, I wanna have associations with great brands. I'm fortunate that knowing Joseph for many years, we needed to have great stemware that was light and be on the road and be able to give our guests the experience of having great wine in, in a glass that mimics what we would have anywhere indoors or doing a seminar. And that's exactly the kind of product we get from Govino. Same thing with Yeti coolers, same thing with DCS kitchen equipment uh, and, and even Vallette restaurant in Healdsburg. So as we, we took off on this cavalcade, uh, we ended up bringing a couple of other wine brands that were crazy enough uh, to, to come with us and do this thing. And I, I told everyone, I said, you know, brace yourselves. This, this shit is a moving target. Laws are changing as we are driving. Uh, locations are going to be closing and opening. And it was, it was an absolutely crazy experience. That first trip, we were gone for two weeks or 14 days. We did 10 events in 14 days and we drove close to 4,000 miles. So it was, it was Oregon, it was uh, all the way in the upper part of Lakeside, Montana, into Bozeman and West Yellowstone, uh, whole Wyoming, and then in Park City, Utah. But the biggest thing about this was conveying, especially during these crazy times and in these different states, I mean, California has had a very, uh, very robust set of protections around virus and COVID. Uh, whether it's social distancing, sanitation, indoors, outdoors, food handling, everything. So I felt very, very well prepared going into any state and circumstance. But the other aspect of encouraging these, these people, it, it was creating events with a host and that host inviting their friends and or a restaurant or a, uh, you know, a country club where we can say, let us, let us give you added value. You can't do something indoors. We can do something outdoors. We can bring the sanitizer, the food, and we can do an entire event that you and your guests will enjoy and we can keep it enforceably safe and limit the number of guests. So, I mean, it is, it is God damn it. We could start an entire new business doing this. Uh, it is, it's been great. People have been incredibly sick. We've done COVID tests after every trip. I've had more crap crammed up my nose uh, than some <laughs> 80s Coke fiend. Uh, but it's, it's been really, really freaking nuts and everything has been safe. We have acquired like a, uh, for example, doing our normal routine, you know, whatever the normal used to be. I mean, I used to do 20 to 30 wine auction events across the country. And our goal before COVID was uh, 300 to 350 new mailing list customers. From doing these kind of events that are high touch and yet no touch, hmm. getting to have good conversations, they're meaningful. It's a deeper relationship that you're, you're building in something like this. Uh, we are at like almost 438 mailing list customers uh, to date as of this morning. So the, the word of mouth experience, people enjoying these types of activities safely and not feeling ashamed about it. it it's, you've got to make your customers feel good. You've got to find a different way to connect with them. And you have to have like-minded associations that are going to allow you to take, take your experience to a different level and outside of your four walls because otherwise next year is going to be really dark. I mean, I, I, I'm not one saying, you know, the glass is half empty or where the sky is falling, but I don't think we're going to have a, a vaccination within the next six months. It's going to hit the general public in Sonoma County, especially after seeing the news this morning, I don't think we're going to be migrating to a different tier, especially going into flu and cold season uh, anytime in the near future. So I think what, where we're at right now is a norm that we're going to see for at least another 12 months. So you've got to figure out a way to connect, get out. And even if we have the rainy season, figure out how to do things differently. And again, carry those associations to deliver the experience. That's even better than what you were doing before. Look at this as an opportunity to connect differently 
and in a better, more meaningful way. And gosh darn it, if you can have some other associations, other wine brands, other other like-minded products like the Govino product to help elevate that experience. I, I will say this also, since I'm looking at Joseph here, I, I've never thought, I mean, picture this, we have logged about 16,000 miles towing a goddamn travel trailer. I never <laughs> thought I would ever say that sentence ever in my entire life. It is critical uh, that you monitor every ounce of weight from the cubes of ice we had in the Yeti coolers to the pounds and ounces of the proteins that we were bringing organic chicken and beef from Sonoma County to every ounce of liquid we have. And that also includes stemware because we, we would bring the linens, the tables and bring the glasses and our guests would get to walk away with a Govino stem and be able to enjoy this entire experience or a Govino glass and be able to just go away and have that as a tangible takeaway point. But also selfishly from my side, that cuts down on 40 or 50 pounds of extra carrying capacity in a travel trailer or an RV. And it's, it was a win-win all the way across the board. And we're looking forward to doing many more. I mean, like I said, we're down here, we're down here in La Jolla to do two social distancing events on a beach with a couple, right. a couple of customers who have brought in, gosh darn it, Joseph, we should have, we should have your glasses down here at the La Jolla Beach and Tennis Club for this. Cause it, they're doing I stuff on the beach down here. I mean, we're gonna have 26 people for an outdoor dinner tasting event tonight, everybody distance, hmm. doing a great thing. But this is this is one of those things we gotta we gotta get the cups in the hands down here, the people. Absolutely. But anyhow, gang, that's that's a little bit of the story. That's a little bit of what we've been doing to think differently, look at this as an opportunity, and and embrace it, and do things different than we have been before, and, and make some great lemonade out of shitty lemons. <laughs> I hope that helps. Where's that photo taken, Sam? I'm sorry, Joseph, say that again. Where is this photo uh, taken? Where, where was this taken, this photo? That was taken on the Gallatin River uh, around the side of West Yellowstone. So across the river, uh, about a half mile in is Yellowstone. And that, that, was, uh, that was a crazy experience. Uh, to the right of that photo, about 100 yards up a steep hill was a little cabin. And you can see the DCS grill there. We had to lump that about a half a mile from where the road was. <laughs> down to a semi-level patch of, of, of dirt where we could do the cooking and, and do the tasting event all the way around. But it was, that was, that was breathtaking. That's, that's a great beautiful. Photo. It. That, that's a real movable feast right there. Yeah. And then that was, uh, that was just a couple of weeks ago. We were in Montecito in Santa Barbara. And again, mm. limiting the event to, uh, I think we had 48 people there all tasting tables spread out you know 20 feet in this backyard everybody coming in in masks and feeling you know we we tell folks as they enter any of these events whatever feels comfortable for you if you want to wear a hazmat suit the entire time <laughs> go for it if you want to roll around in a, an entire tub of sanitation liquid go for it if you feel comfortable putting your mask down not shaking hands no hugs go for it mm -hmm. uh, even the charcuterie plate that you have there in front of you there are individual toothpicks to skewer the food. Everything we did was no touch. Uh, and because we had our, our self-imposed labor force, i.e. my children, they <laughs> would serve food with tongs. So there was, no, there was no touching of anything. Everything was gloved and masked. And, and people would leave an event like that and go, what, who the hell are you guys? Where is this coming from? And, and, and for me, I mean, it's really, and, and we, this is the other thing. We, didn't, we don't charge for these events. The only thing we tell our host, whether it's a country club or a restaurateur or a private resident, somebody that's on our mailing list, all we ask is that you invite wine loving people that might want to join our mailing list, but they need to be involved in wine. We're not, we're not here to host just a cocktail party for your family. And man, people just have been losing their minds over this. It's, it's been a great way to safely share some of that Sonoma County experience on the road. And again, doing, doing things differently. And uh, it, it, I, I will say it's exhausting, um, but it's, it's been worth every ounce of, of effort and every blood, sweat, and tear that we've put into this whole thing. It's been dynamite. Sam, we got a question about um, ROI, and you touched a little bit on it already in yeah. terms of your new mailing list, kind of in comparison to what it was last year. But um, did you, you know, was that your expectation? Are you also, so, like, what's the, like, selling cases? What has that maybe looked like? 
um, from last year to before, or ha has this addressed that at all? Do you bring well, wine can, cases you know, to distribute there? <clears throat> well, I can tell you right now that our normal conversion rate. So if we were, we in our we were in our normal period of me doing the the wine auctions across the country, it's usually 55 to 60 percent of the people that we acquire convert over to buying customers. So far, we've just had one release with these people that we brought onto our mailing list and we've seen over 70, I think it was 73, 74% conversion rate from the people that we've acquired through these methods. And here's the other piece of ROI on that is that when, when I look at, I mean, so here we are a, 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 an incredibly small brand. I have a consulting uh, 1099 winemaker uh, who, who is brilliant. I do about 80% of that work, but she is phenomenal. And I've got a consulting bookkeeper so, I mean, we don't have employees. We have my lovely wife, who is our director of everything good and lovely with everything around our wines. I am chief janitorial services and schlepper and, and everything, <laughs> customer service analytics, the whole ball of wax. And now I can add our children to that as they're, they're this dynamo force. When I, when I look at what we've spent doing our traditional efforts, I mean, my, my marketing travel budget for doing those normal events is between 55 and $65,000. Right. Buying a trailer, upgrading a vehicle to tow that trailer, the cost of food, the cost of wine, we're not even half yet of what our normal spend has been traditionally to acquire customers the old way. So being able to see that and see the results just tangibly, I mean, we just ended our fall release last week. To see these results was was. I don't want to say shocking, but goddamn encouraging. Mm. Really, really great to see. Great. Yeah, I was just going to ask about you know the the costs on that. Um, that's outstanding, actually. Uh, what's your it has been, and, and it's and it's also you know the the other thing that that I it, it's kind of a reassurance point that I like to tell a lot of the new people that we're meeting is I mean yes I, I'm I have no doubt people can safely travel on airplanes right now. I mean, there, there is there's no doubt. But when we have our children and we have distance learning going on and I need everybody's help, I, my, my uncomfort or my discomfort level, if I was put everybody on an airplane and stay in a hotel all the time, having those additional exposure points kind of raises the hackles on the back of my neck uh, in, in a big way. So being able to reassure our guests, like, listen, we're being super safe. We're traveling in a, with a pod of people where we're not out doing crazy, weird, lucidious stuff. We're not in mass groups of people. We're driving by car. We're staying in our travel trailer. And we're, we're bringing the best of health and everything else that we can to the table, if you will, on, on our side. And it really resonates with people. And they get it. And they know they can see and they can appreciate the levels of safety and concern that we're bringing in making new relationships. Do you see this, um, you see yourself doing this through the fall and winter? I do. Okay. I mean, it's it's going to take on, I mean, what's what's really crazy is we have gotten some, we have a lot of requests to take this into the, the Midwest and the East Coast. Uh, mm -hmm. that, the thought of that makes me want to vomit. I mean, it's it's a lot of effort just to stay within the, the, the Western part of the United States. Uh, but there are a lot of folks, we might start embracing one entire state and really focusing on, on those sort of aspects and really robustly uh, doing one state. And, and that's gonna take, as we get into winter months, I mean, I will say this, when we started uh, in May, I mean, when we were up in far North Montana, I mean, we saw rain, sleet, snow, mud, freezing temperatures. Uh, it's, it's a common joke among a lot of my close friends that Someday we will have a comedy or a documentary called Living Lando. Because if there is weird shit that can happen, it's going to happen to me. And it always does. Uh, so the first, the first uh, adventure in the, the travel trailer, and we've gone through two travel trailers, mind you. Uh, the, the first travel trailer, the, the deep 14-hour drive, the slide out didn't work, the heater malfunctioned, and we're sitting there in 29-degree weather, and it's raining and snowing. Uh, and we and at that one we had the kids, our Labrador, and 22 cases of wine, and it was it was an, a veritable shit show. But a lot of learning, uh, a lot of appreciation, and kind of living in the moment, and enjoying what we're doing, and trying to remember to take a deep breath as we're going through it. And 
And I definitely, Leah, I, I definitely see us doing this going into next year. I mean, I, again, I don't miraculously see that we are going to change course. I'm, I'm hopeful on the political side, whichever end that that ends up coming down on, we don't, we don't clamp down our country again. I mean, to see that happening in Europe right now is uh, it's scary. I know from a business standpoint, if we go through a full other clamp down again, I mean, it's going to be some really tough stuff. I mean, we've, we've got our lips just above the ship right now with everything that's happened. I mean, I know we're going to talk about the, the on-premise and restaurant world. Thankfully, that's only 25% of my business, but it's, it's 25% that has been almost non-existent. Uh, yeah. Restaurants are starting to climb back, but if we go through a full shutdown again, things are going to get really dark, and I'm hoping that we don't have that. But it also reinforces what we're doing is on the right path. It's on the right page. And to be able to figure out ways to keep doing this for the next six months, at least, it is definitely on the forefront of what our planning is for next year. Yeah. Anything um, you would change this time around? Oh, uh, man, I wish I could hire a catering team to go along with us. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's there. there's not much I would change, uh, to be really honest. I mean, it's I feel that we've done this now. I, I think the tally, we've done 38 events since May and uh, traveled over 16,000 miles. It's, it's weird that we kind of have it down a little bit now. Um, traveling the, the DCS barbecue has been great, but it's a monster of a behemoth. Uh, you need to have two adults. Uh, lo 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 it's the logistics. Logistics are the toughest part of it. If we had more time, more days uh that would be another thing to try and plan out but then you're you know when you're 21 days outside of the house it, it's it's a little rough um but you know we're, we're doing the best we can and we will figure out and keep doing it awesome well congratulations sam i think that's um an incredible way to be innovative and really kind of quick with it and um, you know to get that running and it, I mean the, that trailer was branded. I don't know if you guys saw that. I mean it's a it, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, it's, it's been a kick and a lot of I mean especially when people are cruising by us and you're know, waving and clapping and yeah. And, uh, it's it's been it's been fun to share that as we've been driving around. And sometimes you know as you're driving you forget you've got that on the back of the trailer. Like why the hell are these people looking at us? Well, it's <laughs> but it's it's been really cool. That's great. I don't see any other questions from here, from the chat room. So thank you so much, Sam, for sharing that story. And I think it hopes it provides some inspiration. Um, I mean, I don't think there's any reason why other wineries wouldn't want to look into doing something like this. I know you had partnered with a couple of other brands as well. So um, perhaps this could be a show on the road model that gets replicated. Mm. Absolutely. Thank you guys very much for having me. Looks great, Sam. Beautiful. Thank you, Joseph. Yay. <clears throat> awesome. So we're um, going to move on to our next part of the conversation, um, which is to really talk about first touch at first taste. Um, and I'll let Joseph sort of uh, lead that part of the conversation. I am um, Joe, did you want to talk about their winery needs as first, or do you want to go into the presentation? You know, we could, I think let's go with the presentation and then we'll go. Jen? Ahead. Right? Jen. Yes. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> Let me pull it right up. Yeah. Do you guys all see that? One second. Uh, yeah. Here we go. Perfect. So we've got Joe um, to talk about that and also Andy, Andy Abramson. Andy, do you want, uh, I think you need to unmute yourself. Perfect. There you are. Beautiful. Can you hear us? We can hear you. Awesome. So I'm going to let you guys sort of lead with the um, with the presentation deck. I don't know if that if you, Andy you wanted to do it or Joe you wanted to. Yeah, thank you, Leanne. We'll tell you when to switch the sides, of course. So perfect. First and foremost, thank you everybody for your time. Uh, you know, this is uh, Sam. You know, those ideas of Sam's. Uh, this is this is what brought us 
here today, and uh, as well as the gentleman in the mask there, uh, Andy, came to me. Andy, I think it was in, I want to say it would may have been February. No, it was Joe. It was more like June, and as as we started to see the world really becoming closing in because of COVID-19 and the coronavirus pandemic. I simply sent you an email. I said, it was a one-line email. I said, if there was ever a time the wine world needs Govino, it's now. Right. And your response was, yes, you're right. What do we yes. do? And that was when we proposed the whole idea of safe tasting because last time I checked, wine doesn't go through these very well. And at the same time, you've got people who want to continue to be able to make a living. The wine, you know, the wine industry is under fire. Uh, whether, you know, the closing down of restaurants, the limitations of number of people who can be seated there, the number of people allowed to come into a tasting room or taste outside the tasting room through the social distancing as a result of, you know, standards being set by the CDC, various health uh, departments across the country and around the world. So we propose to you and you with open arms, you and your partners, Eric and KR all were like so enthusiastic when Rod and I presented the idea of safe tasting. And that led to the whole idea of never touch and first touch and first taste. And we'll talk about that as we go through the slide deck. But the receptivity that, that you and the wine community has around the Govino Safe Tasting Initiative is really starting to catch fire. Right. Right. I think, uh, Joe, I think, I think it's really good, you know, if you can take people through just a little bit about the history of Govino. Absolutely. I mean, some of us know it intimately, like Sam and Rebecca, obviously. Right. But everybody hasn't been around the wine world like you and I. We have the gray hairs to prove it and the, the many empty bottles. Right. Yeah, so let's go to the next slide, Leah, and I'll kind of give everyone a little brief background, you know. And I love this, this adage here, you know, all wine is subject to the glass it's served in. And I was just thinking of Sam's traveling roadshow and being dependent on the glass, right? To showcase your wine, you've put tons of resources into making that beautiful Pinot Noir. And at the, at the end of the day, the moment of judgment is the wine glass, right? I mean, before COVID, for me, the biggest issue I had with restaurants was how, whether or not their stemware would smell, you know, from the dishwasher. Right. That was my chief complaint. So I've been a stemware fanatic since day one. And when we first launched Govino, the very the, the inception of the idea was a trade tool to help vintners and wine reps and, you know, anybody in the wine industry to provide them with a, a, a tool that would properly showcase their wine. That was the main goal of Govino. And I told it, as you guys, some of you know, around Napa and Sonoma, those were our very first customers, some of the top wine estates in the world. Uh, you know, I, I really handled the wine industry side of it. I've got Bar AW on the call today, thank you so much. And they help market it internationally. So we've got an incredible throughout the world with this product that started as a trade tool. So proud in the USA as we state there and we believe our patented ergonomic design is synonymous with quantity, uh, quality. So let's go to the next slide. So I think what's real important is you were born and bred in the wine industry. The right. people behind Govino are some of the, the biggest household names in, in the wine communities and at wine retail. You've got, you know, K.R. Rombauer involved with you. You've got Eric Nickel from Nickel Nickel and more importantly, Far Niente. Right. The, the the winemakers who you first started talking with years ago when you were bringing this idea to life you know like the Gaia's of the world you this wasn't a carpetbagger outside you're an inside the community and i think Thank that's you. what that was what provides such a rich understanding and what makes the product so special i, I you and i have joked about how my housekeeper put a govino over with the glasses that i have and i went <laughs> to reach for a a a, a, a stemless glass and it was a Govino and I couldn't tell the difference when I was reaching up to it because it looked so much like, st like stemware without the stem. Thank you. Well, you know, the, the other objective of ours was also to be as sustainable as possible. And I know that's in, uh, super important in the wine industry as well. 
So, you know, our number one goal was making a product that was reusable, right? So it wasn't, it was never intended to be a single use plastic cup. And, you know, I should state that we, we say that one Govino is uh, equivalent to hundreds of single use plastic cups. We should actually say thousands because we just received an email uh, about a, a few weeks ago from a, from a customer who after six years was finally chucking their Govino in the recycler because it had looked so bad after all the uh, wear and tear. So, you know, we're fortunate that we've created a product that people do not want to just use and discard. Uh, we're seeing all kinds of new ideas for reuse. In fact, our new website, we're showing uh, other you know, applications of Govino where people are using it long after, you know, it's been, uh, you know, uh, worn out from uh, all the tastings and dishwasher runs. So, and speaking of dishwashers, uh, you know, it's important because a lot of us don't realize that Govino is dishwasher safe now. Everyone, we, you know, don't forget we launched Govino. It was a hand washable product. Being, being of the wine industry, we always felt people, you know, hand wash their glasses. Uh, you know, and, and we had such a large demand for dishwasher safe Govino. So in 2015, uh, we were able to accomplish that. So uh, these dishwasher safe line can go through these eco labs, commercial, uh, commercial dishwashers, domestic dishwashers. We've done lab tests with Eastman, uh, the company that polymer. Uh, they've done lab tests for us and these just uh, withstand uh, thousands of cycles and logos don't wear, wear at all. So, uh, so in 2000, uh, you know, early 2020, we developed uh, to protect uh, Govino glass. And this was even to uh, the pandemic. We wanted to, you know, the uh, Govino is shatterproof, but it can scratch or mar slightly. So we've always protected it, especially with our retail packaging. And I'll get into the glassine baggies, and this is where I hear from everybody, Leah, about what they see as, uh, you know, as for them as far as first, uh, first taste. So, thank you. So, oh, we, we, we look, Joe, uh, uh, with this, uh, next year is going to be the return of the outdoor tasting. Right. That's and and one, of the, one of the things that you brought up was, and we concurred, is that a broken glass is a big liability risk. You know, glass flies. I, I was at a restaurant, you know, recently and someone broke a glass. And the first thing I saw was the service taking everybody's food away. Yeah, right. Because you don't know where that glass flies. And then the, the other problem in the tasting room environment is the handling of the glass and the possible health concerns that come from it as a glass is in theory washed and then it's touched and it's dried. And, you know, we felt when we came to you with the idea of safe tasting that in order for the wine industry to be revitalized, whether it's at the tasting room or at the restaurant, the country club, or even a wine bar, that there needs to be something other than the glass and that's Govino. Right. Absolutely, yeah. And those are the two, as you pointed out, Andy, I mean, broken glass, surely it's, it's not only a restaurant, it's an, a, an outdoor setting like Sam, uh, your settings where you were, if you break a glass, it's a huge liability. Somebody cuts their, their foot. We used to have to send videos of people stepping on Govinos for some of the large events we used to do to prove that even though it wasn't glass, it still wouldn't shatter and a, a shark wouldn't penetrate someone. But the other thing, like Andy said, and these touch points, uh, like Sam's uh, toothpicks on every piece of cheese, I think this is a, another example. Uh, you look down at a glass now and you wonder who was the last person to, to put their lips right where I'm about to put mine, right? And I think a lot of people think that instinctively. I, I, you know, you check into a, a five-star hotel now, I haven't done that lately, but, the, but the, any glassware that's there, it's covered with paper, uh, if there's glassware there. So this whole new contactless type of service is going to be with us for a long time, just like 9-11, you know, we still can't, it's been how many years since 9-11, we still can't fly with three ounces of fluid, right? So I see this contactless service as something that's going to be with us for a long time, just as I see outdoor tastings being with us for a long time. So we, yeah. And, and so that brings us to, you know, elegance and function, right? So I'm, I'm a stemware freak. 
And I used to walk into restaurants and the first thing I'd do is, you know, judge them from their stemware. And you, I would, you know, who has looked down to see if there was a Riedel stamp on the, on the glass, right? Oh, these people care, they get it. And so here's a good example of someone like Sam, you know, he didn't have a tasting room. He finally opened a tasting room in Southern California and COVID hit. Now what he's doing, Scott Palazzo of Palazzo's Wines, what he's doing now is similar to us at small venues at people's homes, uh, hotels. And what he does is the same thing as Sam, he brings his, brings his Govinos and it's contactless service, same, uh, same theory. And, and again, you know, we're, what Govino is providing for him is that you see that, that he cares. It's Govino. You, can, you recognize the thumb notch and, you know, he's put, you know, he's put some thought behind his grab a glass or a generic plastic cup from China that was, that would be thrown away the next day. So other opportunities that have, we've been seeing, um, you know, the event business is a major, major part, or was a major part of Govino's business. So just like what everyone's feeling with COVID and, and the pandemic with their tasting rooms and on-premise sales, our event business is, is completely shut down. So we started thinking of ways, that's why we're all here today, of creating new opportunities out of these challenges. And one happened to come to me from Rebecca with Onrio, and they had a, a great concept, and I'll, I'll let her take it from, from, from there. Hi, Rebecca. Hi, Thanks, Joseph and Leah and everyone for having me join today. Um, as Joseph, I'm going to jump off a lot of what Sam and Andy and Joseph were saying. As we know, this year really, for all of us in the wine business, it's been a struggle, right? And not only for us, but also for our on-premise accounts as a total. So what we've found is that we know that the outdoor world is really adapting, right? We've seen pretty inspirational outdoor settings pop up, right? For restaurants, whether it be part of their patio space that they had or taking over parking lots or whatever it may be. So it's a completely new adaptable environment, but one that we see, as you guys mentioned, that will probably stay, right? There'll be a version of that that stays. And a lot of it's really enjoyable. But what we had to do is adapt, one, to find a way to bring focus to our brand, Champagne Onrio in particular, but also a, a tool to go to our customers and to start that conversation. And we knew by partnering with Govino, one, that our brand would be showcased in a, in a glass that was high quality, right? That all the work, just as Sam has done and has done in the care of their brands. And as Joseph said, if it's not a shitty glass, then it just takes away from the experience. So for us, we understood that there was a great synergy with Govino as our brands. So we put together a on-premise uh, restaurant program that we could go across the country with this program. And what we did is we basically, it gave us the opportunity to have a discussion with our restaurant partners and this outdoor dining solution. And so what we did is we basically put together a program and of course, limited with legality state by state, of course, but essentially, and it's all flexible mobile, but essentially it's if someone would commit to three cases champagne auto and focus on the brand, then a case of Govino was available to the account that would be logoed and branded. So one, it provided a conversation starter for us to have a conversation with our restaurant partners. And of course, not everyone is not going to stay away from glassware or crystal, but there's plenty of opportunities, especially now. And by having those conversations, we could really delve in and strategize with accounts and find out how can we work together because then a, a difficult situation as well and ways we can support them. But as a result of this, it allowed that conversation to start and we could adapt to several different programs, whether it was a buy the glass program, where essentially if someone came in and either bought something by the glass or even by the bottle, 
then they would be presented with the Govino glasses, the bottle of wine, again, contactless, touchless, things of that nature. And then either the restaurant, because you're now providing a glassware solution in the outdoors. So either the restaurant would determine that they will use the glasses and want to use them, or they would give them away as a part of the program, that they would just allow customers to leave with the glassware as well. We also found the opportunity by having this initial discussion is it kind of parlayed into a to-go program with restaurants, right? Where we wanted to bring again, as we all do, bring focus to our brands with our partners and to be able to say something like, hey, why don't you focus on some champagne on Rio? It'll be, you, you pair it with this dish you're doing or a part of your to-go program. And then a part of that package is they would get two or four glasses as a part of the to-go package, right? So then again, you're adding value to both your restaurant and ultimately your end consumers, right? And for all of us, what we're looking for is a way that one, we get an impression of all of our brands, but also a long-term impression. And we can do that through Govino with the glass because then our, our brand kind of lives on, right? People take it with them. They remember the brand, they remember the quality, of our product and also the glassware. And hopefully it, it creates more consumer awareness, of course, and also, again, solutions for our restaurant partners that we can do that. So, and another, I'll give you another example. You know, what we also found with some accounts, you know, every, as we know, we're all doing virtual tastings now in some way or another, but it allowed us an opportunity to, again, parlay that partnership and ideas, like whether it be a wine dinner, that they were focusing on our brands as a total, right? And so customers came and got the whole program, right? They picked up their food, they picked up their wine for the dinner, they got their glassware. Then it was a whole package that was put together. And I'll give you an example. I worked with um, Malibu Beachin and we did a virtual tasting brunch where I had our seller master from France join us um, on a Saturday, and a part of the program was same thing, like someone got all their brunch goodies with them, they received all their bottles of wine and champagne, they received their Govino, so it was a whole little package that went out there, but it allowed me an opportunity to have a discussion with a high-end partner of ours that they were thinking of different ways of how they could go to market with their brand, and then we found ways to work together and to say, okay, how can we do this? Let's support each other and find a way that this works, right? And so again, there's going to be some restaurants that they might not want a logoed glass because for us, we deal with pretty high-end customers as well and all the A, a customers without question, but we found ways to work around that and, and some it, it hasn't, but it still has created the opportunity to have a discussion about portfolio and possible solutions and created that kind of inspiring kind of conversation, right? Which is what this is all about. It's how can we work together? How can we all pivot and adapt to this environment and find solutions that take a little bit of stress off of our restaurant partners, which we know have suffered tremendously along with all of us, but supporting them and their, their ability to get to the end consumer and do that. So we've had some success across the country. Um, this We really rolled this out originally, I would say it was probably uh, July or August. So obviously, as we go into, in some states, right, as we go into colder weather, we'll see how the outdoor environments adapt. But I certainly think Think it's something that will stay with us for some time and, and go along but we've, we've got an account in Vail that he was only fine dining left bank he was only open for dinner at night and he understood that you know what this isn't going to work for me I'm not going to make it through so he now opens up for lunch does a more casual brasserie style lunch approach everything is outdoor picnic table but kind of to Sam's point earlier, he loves it. And now he thinks to myself, why didn't I ever do this before? And it's something that it's, it's now for him, he's found that one, there's a revenue stream for him there. 
And two, it, it's a different way to get his brand out there and have people try because for him, it's a very high end. So not everyone experienced left bank. Now they've got a little bit more of a casual concept that allows people to experience, you know, left bank food, come back and enjoy while, you know, for us, for me, we had the opportunity to work together with him and showcase Champagne on Rio. Mm. So th this has just been ways, I mean, I was certainly inspired by the story uh, Sam mentioned and what he's done. And it, it, to me, just looking at that, I thought I, I'd like to be at one of those tastings, right? right? And right. being able to have a solution in glassware to really showcase our brands ha has made a difference, both, you know, uh, and, and another thing too, for all of you guys out there, it's another tool that you can take to your distributor partners to be able to say, you know, here, now you can go to market with this program and see, and at least it starts a conversation. Great, Rebecca. Do you do, do you want to mention the portion control as well? We you know uh, we've been working with our printer. We've had our same printer since two thousand nine, and uh, what we've developed with him is what we call portion control printing. So we could place any logo at some of these on-premise accounts, uh, or even uh, an event or a wine tasting room. If you're doing a two ounce pour, or four ounce pour, whatever it might be, we could place the logo so you don't have a tacky pour line, you know. But you do have a way of, you know. Look, uh, shrinkage waste is is tremendous. It saves thousands right. of dollars. Work with some big, big uh, on-premise accounts where they had a six ounce pour and their staff knew exactly where to hit it on the logo and they'd go away. So well, you're uh, exactly with, right. That was a key. That's a key certainly like selling and communication point as we talk about that be, be for that very reason. Because when you talk about waste and things that matter, not only in restaurants, but as you mentioned, they're, they're at the wineries, right? When you're pouring in your wine rooms or whatever it may be, you always want to think about waste. And this allows the perfect solution with the logo placement and it can be customized. So that's the other piece of it. You know, restaurants specifically, then we'd say, what's your ounce pour? Are you pouring three ounces, four ounces, five ounces? Then let's just set the logo. So the bottom of the logo measures exactly that ounce pour. And it certainly was another value add to reduce weight. And again, then you're not having breaking glasses. And for Great. us, they're casing our, our product properly. Fantastic. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I'm, I'm looking at the time I've had, we've had such a great conversation. It's I know we got to get moving. <laughs> I, I want to get through and make sure people, you know, understand this particular, the first touch, first page yeah, part this of is, it, and then open it up to questions. Yeah, this is where we really want to get some feedback here. So, you know, as you know, pre COVID, even we were looking at ways to protect Govino through packaging. And, you know, when Andy came to me with the safe tasting concept, I realized how ideal these glassine baggies would be for um, for this contactless service. So essentially, it's a food grade uh, glassine bag. And what I'd love to hear from everybody, I mean, this would be a way for you to hand, it's going to get noisy because I'm actually putting it in it. And I wanted to show it to everybody. But this would be a way for, so the way Govino's produce on the line, uh, gloved hands take Govino off the conveyor belt and will and they place it in these in these glassine baggies so it's never touched um, the printer the same thing it, it, it gets printed it get, it, it's gloved hands that uh, place Govino into the screen printer and place it back into the uh, into the glassine baggie so this would be a way of just handing a customer uh, a glass that has obviously has never been used. So again, this is that contactless service that we're talking about. So I'd love everybody's feedback. If, if at the tasting rooms, are they hearing people with reservations about stemware? Uh, you know, this is a way to, to solve that. And we can go to the next slide. I know we're tight on time, Leah. Yeah, and and yeah, feel free to chime in on you know your thoughts on that. Um, I personally like it. I think there is certainly just a barrier that you or just like this 
worry you know we went wine tasting for the first time in months like once like a couple of weeks ago and um just to address that right off the bat it you don't need to say anything you just see it and you automatically sort of your experience sort of changes and there's just a, a little sigh of relief when <laughs> you know when you know that someone's addressed what you might be nervous about um right. so so i particularly like that um the little baggie Mm -hmm. Good. And Sam, I know you were using the um, stackable line, which, you know, uh, didn't, but we certainly, uh, you know, I would love to, everyone's feedback on what we've done with these glassine baggies. To me, it just feels like something so clean that, you know, there's no worry about who's the last person to drink out of, of course. We, we could go to the next slide. And this is something that we're really um, excited about. You know, we we know that the wine regions, especially Sonoma County, have been very hard hit. We know that your, your firefighters have been a lifesaver in so many ways. And one of the things that we believe strongly in is giving back with Govino. So 10 cents of every Govino sold to a Sonoma County Vintner member will be donated right to the brave team members and the fire associations within the Sonoma County Fire District, because let's face it, they're the ones every day when the fires hit who are helping you stay in business long-term. And we wanna be able to do something because fire equipment's not inexpensive. Fire equipment always needs to be modernized. So we see that by doing our small part with you, that we're helping them and showing them that we appreciate them. I love this. Um, I come from a nonprofit background um, and there's no shortage of needs out there now. And I think doing something like this and also addressing um, the needs for wineries um, to present new products like this, I think is, is so important and amazing. So thank you. Um, do you wanna talk briefly about, you know, the actual like branded glass and the limited edition? Um, yeah, I'm sorry, Leah. Yes, because I had a little glitch. So we did, I, I, we completely missed the um, one slide showing the logo. So just want everybody to know that we could brand both logos, Sonoma County Vintners logo, along with the winery logo, or just the winery logo. That, that's an option as well. That's and right. We, you don't have to have Sonoma County Vintners if you don't want to. I like them, obviously, but um, it's totally up to you. Right, exactly. So we could do it either way. Um, if you go to the slide with the four pack, we could talk briefly about that. I know we're tight on time, but no pressure. We would just need to sell about 100 cases of these to make this work. So uh, the concept is an open four pack with the Sonoma County Vintners, you know, logo on the on the, the graphic on the front panel. But the glasses within would all be the customized Govinos for each for the winery that's that's doing the program. So this is something we could talk about in the future, Leah. Uh, but again, we need, I think it's a great opportunity. I think it'd be wonderful to sell in tasting rooms. I think wine, great stores in, in Sonoma and Healdsburg would love to have something like this uh, to support. One well, part of your wine club holiday offering. Right, wine clubs. You do direct to consumer, but you guys do. And so to be able to part, utilize that as a part of a holiday offering or something is cool. Right. And we'd place the Sonoma ABA, which I know uh, you love this idea, Leah. We placed the Sonoma uh, ABA map on the top panel as well. And it them, just, yeah, there was, a, I don't know if there's a picture of that on here, but. Um, there, there isn't. I, yeah. So what, what we've done with the limited edition, as I've shown you, you know, these are the holiday four packs. So we do the same thing. We would just on the on the top panel would be the Sonoma County ADA would be at the top. Yeah. Yeah. So we could talk about that. But like Rebecca said, this is great for wine club members uh, and and, uh, you know, just any kind of uh, winery retail room as well. Yeah. I think it's great, Joe. We're going to be getting an order from soon. Okay, one. good. I like that, Thanks Sam. Thank you guys for having me. I got to go. Okay. Just about out of power. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, guys. And I'll, put, out um, I'll include Joseph's contact information in the follow-up um, right. email to this, including the recording and this deck um, for you guys to peruse through for sure. Um, I There was a comment here. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> um, where did my chat go? Oh, 
Um, just from Lisa Allen, they've not had any issues with presenting somewhere, but for distance events, it would be great. So it's grab and go where people can be empowered to participate on their own terms without excessive waiting, queuing and such. That's oppressive. Um, and Mari from the Merit, Mari Jones from Merit Terrace, Emerita said she's had the same experience. So that's, um, so that's interesting. Uh, we could kind of go through these next few real quickly. I know we're tight on time, Leah. So Andy, I, I'd let you kind of speak to this about the idea of, you know, of course, you know, once once tasting rooms are open again, and uh, we could tie this into some of the existing programs. Um, but go ahead, Andy. So the whole idea, we call it the three C's, collectability, continuity, and care. The idea is that every year you can have a different look on your Govinos and make them very customized, make them a limited edition, use them as a, a loader program to get people to think about your brand and your winery or your specific wine within your winery. Um, they can be customized and they can also be made, you know, numbered limited edition. Um, you collect them year after year and each winery can have a single Govino SKU or they can have multiple Govino SKUs. Um, we like the idea of this being, you know, um, a year after year program. So there's continuity. There's also continuity through winery associations. And we'll speak to that, you know, earlier, ne early next year about the idea of tying into passport like programs. So, you know, you collect the whole series, but the real underpinnings of this is about care. And it's about care and respect. And it's about respect for your customer and your staff's health. It's about being cognizant of taking the right steps to where you are leading in thinking about their welfare. So health and welfare is at the forefront of everything we're doing. And it's about demonstrating, you know, physically you know, that you're going the extra mile to ensure that no one, nothing that you're doing is transmitting anything that can make somebody unwell or unhealthy. And lastly, it's showing consideration for the customer as part of the care process. So by building something that's collectible, that has a continuity program aspect from winery to winery or year after year, as well as demonstrating you care, we see a lot of subliminal messages being sent to people. Yes, I know that you know people are using stemware and yes, everyone says there hasn't been a problem, but the first time there is a problem with stemware, it will spread like wildfire in the wine community and it will spread through wildfire in the CDC and various health departments. We want you to be proactive and, and be able to say, no, 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 we're doing things that stops that from happening. And that shows you care. Uh, and the next slide Leah, is, uh, thank you, Andy. The next slide is the pricing we've put in place as you and I have discussed. Uh, we're offering the 25% discount and also what we made, what we did to make it easier for wineries during this time is we've lowered the minimum. It's usually four cases to customize Govinos. And our cases are 72, they're not like a standard wine case. Uh, case. So 72 units per case. And we've uh, lowered uh, the quantity to two cases. So just two cases and you get that 25% discount. And again, it can be the single color, single logo uh, or both Sonoma County and the winery logo. And the nice thing is the way we place this, the logo on the on the Govino glass, it's at the 90 degree angle. So if you're, you know, your customers are at your winery and they want to take a great photo, or they're at home and they're taking a great photo of, of, of wine in your in your customized Govino, the, the thumb notch is instantly recognizable. So again, it's like that Riedel stamp, you know, it's quality. Uh, and you know, no one else has this patented, unique, you know, ergonomic look and feel. Yeah, I, I keep going back to the to go aspect of this, mm -hmm. um, part, you know, with the on premise stuff um, and and even with, you know, the virtual wine tastings like I personally, I, I love that aspect mm -hmm. of it most um, as opposed to, you know, the 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 in person stuff, the in person stuff makes total sense to me. But my life right now with two kids, I mean, I'm, I'm taking nice food to go like on our, you know, random Friday nights and to. Mm -hmm. upsell of a bottle of wine with two Govinos. I just mm -hmm. really love that. Um, and brand branded with the, you know, with the bottle name, yep. I think um, just resonates really well. 
regardless of COVID, um, just, you know, from a, from a takeout or to go exactly. perspective, so um, it's because it elevates it, right? Like it's just, you're accessing something high end. Um, well, you know, what it is? it's, it's, it's uh, I always call it spontaneous elegance. You know, you yes. don't expect right. it. You don't expect it. And all of a sudden, wow, this is a really great experience. Yeah. I, I was just at a restaurant. Rebecca was there. The stemware was atrocious and it smelled like, you know, because they have to sterilize everything, right? So it's going through God knows how many cycles in the, in the Ecolab system. And this glass smelled like fish tank water, honestly. So I, I, I always have Govino with me. I pulled out my Govino glass and it, the, the, the experience was elevated beyond description, you know? So again, it's that spontaneous elegance, people showing you care. And, uh, but we love trying to, you know, working with everyone and, and coming up with these opportunities. Our event business is really, you know, it's shut down right now. So we understand it. We understand the pressures and that's why we've created this, so. Awesome. I'm gonna share your contact information in the chat right now. And we can um, send that slide pricing to every all the uh you know all of the members that you're whenever you want just so they know that this this is this program is there for them yeah and leah don't forget i've got a beautiful little i gift know package. i know um, thank you all i almost i did almost forget about that um okay so sh so some lucky winner thank you all for zooming in i know it's kind of a crazy time um and you know we're a little bit over time but one yeah. lucky attendee is going to get a decanter and a four pack. Yes. I'm just going to randomly choose you. Oh, how do you do it? Yeah. I, I'm yeah. sorry. Congratulations <laughs> to Heidi Ditloff. Yes. And I don't know which winery you are, Heidi. I should know that. But um, I will forward you um information or we'll probably just need your address so um our friend joseph can send that over to you yep yeah just send me the address uh leah and we'll make it happen awesome do we have any other questions outstanding thoughts oh. Okay, so I just, I meant to include a bunch more information on the chat, but I just got so engulfed in the conversation. I'm just going to include it all in the follow-up email. Okay. Thank you so much, Leah. Thank you so much. Bye. I think this is an incredible thing that you're doing. Um, everyone's needing to pivot. I think we're doing an amazing job, but um, already I know our wineries are, but to just have a forum to discuss even new things and new solutions and new ideas. Um, it's good for the brain. Um, it's good for oh, the yeah. process. Absolutely. Thank, Thank you. you. Take Thank care. You. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.